this session, we're going to be talking about WeChat marketing. So how many of you actually use WeChat a lot? And do you use mainly WeChat for messenger functions? Everything. Everything. <laughs> Everything. So we're going to get into that. OK, so a little bit about who I am. So I've been on the stage a lot, and I haven't even told you anything about me besides my name. So we're going to dive a little bit more into that. So I run a full-service Chinese marketing agency. We do marketing in both English and Chinese, more in Chinese, which is why we invited the Hootsuite experts to share their insights on Facebook, Instagram, and the various apps that we talked about. So some industries, two key industry verticals that we service, so we work with a lot of luxury fashion brands, jewelry, cosmetic, hospitality, so we work with Burberry Beauty, YSL, Max Mara, Cartier, uh, and then, of course, a lot of real estate marketing as well. So we've had the pleasure of working quite a bit alongside Concord, uh, both in Toronto and in Vancouver, for the past eight years. I am not going to tell you how old I am. <laughs> so some of the key services that we offer includes business strategy consultation, of course, WeChat marketing, media buy-in planning on WeChat and Weibo and other Chinese uh, digital media platforms, as well as the English ones that I mentioned, and even event planning, so the event today that you've been attending. Uh, we definitely had a part working alongside the Concord team to plan that. So today's agenda, here's what we're going to cover. So of course, what is WeChat? So a bit of the numbers to show you a bit of how powerful this app is, because a lot of um, people who may not be say from mainland China, they may not be very well versed on the platform and they may not have the, a clear idea of how powerful the app is. So we'll go over that. And why is the app so powerful? So we'll show you that in actually the very first slide that I show you. WeChat for personal use. So we had quite a few hands that went up when I said, well, how many of you use WeChat? So basically 90% of you use WeChat. And then we'll talk about WeChat for business. So all the tools that as realtors, as real estate marketing teams, as real estate developers that you can use for business purposes. And then the fourth section is a bit beyond WeChat because everybody wants to be on WeChat, but there are some other opportunities as well because WeChat, if you, if you really dive into the business uses, it may be a lot of upkeep and work for you to create content for WeChat. So what are some other platforms that you could also leverage and place ads on, right? So we'll do a little bit on these, um, on these apps and other opportunities as well. So what is WeChat? So I had somebody in the back say, I use it for everything. Essentially, he's correct. He, you can use it for everything. So all these apps, how many of you have the majority of these apps on your phone? Yeah, so of course, like we probably use Facebook, we use WhatsApp, and if uh, I got here by Uber, right? So Booking.com, Expedia, so everything from travel to hotels to <laughs> buying uh, even movie tickets or splitting expenses, online shopping, paying your bills. WeChat Pay is the equivalent of say Apple Pay and it's even more common in, actually very common here as well. So you guys have WeChat Pay basically everywhere in Toronto as well, right? You can pay with WeChat Pay. So all these things are consolidated into WeChat, which is what makes it so powerful because that means a lot of people are spending a lot of time on WeChat every day. So WeChat as a global social media platform, the numbers have probably shifted a bit. The numbers have probably shifted a bit higher. So right now they are they were at 1.1 billion registered accounts, over 17 million active official accounts. So official accounts are like Facebook business pages. But businesses can register for an official account if you have a business registered license or if you have a China personal ID. You can register for a subscription account. So there's different types of official accounts as well. And then there are over a billion daily active users and people check WeChat moments very, very frequently. So WeChat moments are, it's like the Facebook newsfeed, right? So for example, uh, there's actually over 10 billion hits on WeChat moments every 24 hours. So that's insane. People are checking it 10 times a day. And then 900 million people use WeChat Pay. So a very high number of people have 
integrated that into their daily lives. They're paying for utilities, they're paying for cab rides, everything goes on there. You could buy fish or get a haircut using WeChat Pay here, right? So I would challenge you to go try, try that because right now WeChat Pay is actually open to international users. So if you thought WeChat Pay is actually, oh, it's only for people who have come here from China and they have that account, it's actually open for international users as well. So you can take out your phone, add your credit card and start spending money on another channel. Okay, and then 30% of all internet time in China is spent on WeChat. So whether that's reading different articles on WeChat through the official accounts, which push out longer form articles, or people are just spending a lot of time on the WeChat newsfeed, going through their friends feeds, or another use of it is a lot of um, salespeople, right? Say whether it's realtors or if you're in retail sales, a lot of your sales actually happen on WeChat because they don't hand out business cards. If you go to a meeting, they will scan your WeChat QR code. So even as I was passing through here and people were asking for my business card, I'm like, scan my WeChat, <laughs> right? Because that's the way that they connect. And of course, ride hailing, like I mentioned, a very popular function on WeChat. It, during rush hour, it's actually used 250,000 times in a minute. That's crazy. Uh, the amount of volume that goes through WeChat so user behavior on a personal side of things. So WeChat users, they spend 90 minutes a day on the platform versus the other ones that we've talked about. So Instagram, we're at 53 minutes because we're all scrolling through and looking for inspirational photos that look pretty, right? You're also going through Facebook and YouTube actually is a, a platform where a lot of people learn about tutorials, so watching videos. But WeChat by far because it integrates a lot of these elements, you can read the news, you can go through your friends' news feeds, you can connect with your friends, so all of those functions all in one, and that's why they, the users there are spending so much more time on the platform. So a day with WeChat, I think this is boring. I'm gonna call on somebody in the audience and you tell me how you use WeChat. That gentleman who said he uses it for everything, tap him. <laughs> So you use WeChat for everything. So tell me in your like regular day, how do you use WeChat throughout your day? What's your day like using WeChat? So do you also use it for WeChat Pay, like when you're paying for things, or? We use more in China, not uh, mm -hmm. so much in here, because we have you know, credit card data or anything. Mm -hmm. But in China, we basically use, we go out without the wallet. We go out just with our phone, with WeChat, that's it. Mm -hmm. Even the, the, you know, the bankers on the street, they, they have a barcode. Yeah. <laughs> like you scan their barcode to pay them, give them money, you don't have change. Yes, so the funny, the funny thing when I was in Shanghai, like late last year, I saw this guy chasing after another person on a bike, and I'm like, why is he chasing after her? So he was waiting for her to get off the bike so he could scan the QR code and rent that bike. So, <laughs> so I was like, why is he chasing her on a bike? But like you said, you could leave the house without your wallet and just live off of WeChat Pay. If you pay in cash, they actually you know, look at you weird, and you're like, okay, you're a foreigner. You're definitely a foreigner, right? So... That's the power of WeChat, and we have to understand how people within China use it and how they use it outside of China, let's say in an environment like within Canada, how do they use it? So that's the personal use side of things for WeChat in terms of how it looks like in a day and how they use it in their day-to-day -day activities. So moving on to business use. So how could you use it for your business? So in that response, he touched on, hey, I use it a lot actually for client relations and client services. So one of the key things is messenger and private groups. So a lot of realtors that I know of, they would use it as a, let's say you have a group of clients that want to buy townhomes, or you have a group of clients that's really interested in Concord Canada House. So you would put them into a group and any new news that you have, you could share it selectively with that group. You could do that either through your WeChat moments, because your WeChat moments, you can select who you want to share it with. 
right? And then you can also do it through WeChat private groups where you put them into a private chat group and you're providing project information just through those private chat groups. And then of course, also sharing photos of brochures or website links. And it's, I'm sure you all know this, your clients who are Chinese, they prefer to receive information that way. They're like, don't bring me a print brochure. If there is any way I can get this information in digital format, let's say a PDF, send it to me using that format on WeChat. And especially because a lot of these buyers, they may not be located here. They may have a representative here who's helping them buy, which is why they need all of this information in digital format. And this is why it's the best way for them to communicate. The interesting thing from hosting a variety of different events where there are Chinese attendees is that one of our main objectives in real estate is we want you to leave us an email so we can email you and also put you into our system. What I've discovered is a lot of the prospective buyers, they actually don't use email. So I'm like, well, what do we do here, right? Because it's a required field in that lead generation form, right? So what happens here? Maybe it's time for realtors slash real estate marketing teams slash real estate developers who consider how the lead generation form changes to adhere to that buyer demographic, right? Okay, so next would be WeChat flyers and brochures. So have you guys all heard of this thing called an H5? If you have heard of it, raise your hands how H5s are used in WeChat. Okay, so H5 format documents are not new, right? So it's been used for quite a while on WeChat. So for example, if somebody's sending you uh, a document that's that you open via a QR code and you're scrolling through a few slides, that's most likely an H5 document. And then we saw that, hey, there's this format, but we could definitely use it for something else, like repurpose it and make it useful for the real estate industry. So what we were noticing is that in a lot of the presentation centers, realtors would come in, they would grab a brochure, their clients would be like, can you send it all to me on WeChat? They're like, do I scan this entire thing or do I just take my phone and take photos? Usually they opt for the latter, right? So you're flipping through taking photos of the brochure and sending it off to your client. But it's not portraying the brand or the project in the best light. So when we saw this opportunity, we were like, we could totally use an H5 and create WeChat brochures. So what that means is, we're saving the client costs on printing another, say, three to 500 Chinese brochures for realtors, and we're digitizing all that content into a format that can be easily shared on WeChat because it's accessible using QR code now, right? So what you see on there is a sample project that we did for uh, a project based in Vancouver, right? So with this, we actually paired it with an offline initiative as well. So I'm sure you all know as realtors or people in the industry that the sales cycle for a new project, usually there's previews, then there's like realtor previews, and there's VIP previews, and there's the actual public previews, right? So through this whole string of events, we were promoting this project QR code just at the reception or on the project hoarding. So people can scan this, and now they have the digitized brochure. So they don't even need to take a brochure. I'm sure that will save you that extra one pound that you're carrying, right? So now that it's available in this format, we actually saw over two weeks, there were 1,800 scans of this WeChat brochure, which means they can now share it with their friends. As a realtor, you can share it with your prospective buyer without having to take photos. And it's in a format that looks much better on your mobile. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll through some sample WeChat brochures we've done. So various projects, so it can be designed to adhere to the branding of a project, right? It doesn't have to look elementary, and that's what we're here for, right? We take a look at the client's brand, we take a look at the different photos and information, and we actually take all the English brochure and A kits that they have, we consult on the type of content that we feel like resonates with the Chinese audience, and then we translate everything into Chinese, and then we digitize it, and then we make it look pretty. So this is just a sample of it. An actual WeChat brochure is about between 20 pages to 25 pages, because you're covering things like the about the developer, you're covering the neighborhood, you're covering the amenities, the interiors, 
the features, the finishings in the suite, and then you also want to cover things like market stats, but most importantly, what do your buyers all care about? Anyone know the answer? What do your buyers all care about? Floor plans, yes, feature floor plans. So we definitely want to leave room for that, right? Because end of the day, the only two questions we get from Chinese buyers, floor plans and show me how much, how much it's gonna cost me, right? So we want to make sure we include that, but all the other ancillary information that helps you sell the project. So if any of you are on WeChat right now, you can try scanning that QR code. It will actually take you to the WeChat brochure. So if anyone wants, sorry, is it fuzzy up here? I don't know if it works. If it doesn't, you can feel free to ask me for it afterwards. <laughs> Did someone say you need a Huawei? I have one. <laughs> yes, so if you can't scan this one, feel free to ask me for these QR codes afterwards. Okay. <clears throat> So for example, this is another project that we did on a WeChat brochure. So this time we also added in something called the walkability score, which is another favorite, especially if you're selling a transit-oriented community, right? You want to show your prospective investors that it's got a 90 plus walkability score and whoever is renting it is going to be super happy living there. So you want to, of course, include information that's going to help you capture the attention of the client and in a way that is nicely presented on a mobile phone. So this was for more for like an investor property building. Okay, and then the third one that we have here, uh, more of a, you could, so you can see like the branding change with each of the different projects that we've constructed a WeChat brochure for, right? So if you're a realtor and you have a project, we are able to align it with the design for the branding that you have and for the audience that you have. This one is a bit more prestigious and premium, so you can see the design is a lot more elegant and simple. It still covers the same type of content, right? It's still feature floor plans because we need to have those. So those are a few of the sample WeChat brochures that we have done. There's many, many more, um, but it's definitely a way that you can present the projects that you represent in a better way and on WeChat because all of these are accessible by QR code. Is that your question now? Feel free to ask now because while I love my own voice, I would love to hear yours too. Uh, what's the difference between <laughs> H, uh, H5 and uh, PDF? So PDF, so you'll need to scroll, you'll need to zoom in, zoom out, right? So it's still not the most friendly format that we find on WeChat. Whereas this, it's all optimized and responsive to the various different devices, right? So you can still PDF an entire brochure, but let's say a developer provides you with a PDF of the brochure, it's most likely going to be in super tiny text because they're taking that print file and they're PDFing that, right? So if just thinking in the shoes of your client, is it helpful for them to zoom into the very small feature sheet or is it better to have something that's mobile and responsively designed? Okay, <laughs> I'm glad it works. Okay, so the next thing would be, so keep in mind that these tools I'm going over, you do not need a WeChat official account, right? Because some clients come to us and they ask us, well, do I need to register for an official account before I'm able to do anything on WeChat? The answer is no, you're able to do quite a few things without having to have your own official account. So this is another thing that you could do. So on the screen there are a few of the different projects we've done, marketing for different brands who do not have their own WeChat official accounts. And we were able to help them run campaigns through WeChat advertorials. So does anyone know what a WeChat advertorial is? So do you guys subscribe to different accounts on WeChat for your news? Anyone subscribe to WeChat accounts to read the news? I have two, one, <laughs> or she's just scratching her head, I don't know. All right, so WeChat subscription accounts is usually where we see a lot of people getting their news. So they're in there following these accounts like a Mingpao or a Singtao, they actually have their own WeChat official accounts. And we actually do placements for our clients on here. So think of it like it's a digitized newspaper, right? So we go in and we say, well, every day you have a WeChat newsletter that goes out on this official account, we're going to help our clients purchase a position on there for a set price, 
right? So we've actually helped clients such as like Shangri-La Hotel or Graph Diamonds or BC Liquor Store to promote their various products and campaigns on WeChat using this method because signing up for an official account means you have to create content because content on WeChat right now is still presented in a chronological order. So there's no algorithm to push you further down the feed or make you disappear. So organic content is still seen, right? But it doesn't, but that means you need to create organic content to continually pop up on the top of the screen. Because whenever somebody pushes out uh, an, an article on a WeChat official account, it pushes them to the top of that subscription feed. But it means every day, every week, you'll need to create something new to stay at the top of it. Okay, the other thing that you are able to do, also without an official account, is you are able to create little WeChat mini games. So why would you want to do that? Let's say you're a realtor promoting a project or a real estate developer, why would you want to do that? Okay, the reason is because it's not as standard as you just pushing out a, here's our A kit or here's a feature sheet for the project. You could actually, let's say you have trivia about your amenities. So you're educating people through a different and more fun and engaging way and there is also a prize to be won at the end of it, right? So these are different ways that you could engage, whether it's for a special occasion, let's say it's Chinese New Year, we usually do quite a few of these for Chinese New Year or for Christmas, right? So, or even project launches when we want to do, use a different way to engage and educate the audience instead of just telling them it has a pool, it has a rooftop garden, it has parking, right? So instead of going about standard ways, which may just sound all the same as other projects, we try to help our clients st stand out by using different tools like WeChat mini games. Okay, so now going into WeChat official accounts. So all those things we just talked about, you do not need Okay, everybody's taking a photo. Okay, so, <laughs> so all those things we just talked about, the H5, the advertorials, you do not need your own WeChat account to do that. But if you so choose, let's say you are a real estate team and you have a team of say four to five people and you're like, yeah, we can take turns writing a market analysis or writing different uh, project briefs in Chinese and pushing the content out onto our WeChat official account then yes, you can register for one. So who in here has a China personal ID? No one, really? An official account, but no ID. Okay, so if you do not have a China ID, and I'm just saying like if you're not a mainland China citizen, right, then your other way to go about registering for a WeChat official account is if you have a registered business. Now, how many of you have a registered business? Here. So if you have a registered business here, the good news is, like beginning from late last year, they, uh, WeChat started really opening up to foreign overseas businesses registering for official accounts. And you are able to do this within the span of one week if you have the proper business documents, right? Then you are able to apply for a WeChat official account and it can get verified within one week and then you're up and running. There are certain restrictions for these types of overseas accounts because WeChat, kind of like Facebook and Instagram, they will test the, the latest innovative functions on the China accounts first. So we may not have access to all of the functions that official accounts have in China for the overseas accounts. So for example, if someone follows you, the only standard message that they can get if you're using a foreign overseas account is thanks for following me either in English or Chinese, and that's dependent on whether the user is using an English or a Chinese version of the app. So you cannot customize the welcome message for a new follower, right? So that's one of the details of like a foreign overseas account, but you are able to register for one. So if you're interested in registering for one, feel free to talk to me after that, um, after this presentation. And then taking a look at some of the official accounts that we run, 
So we touched on this in earlier sessions when we were talking about, say, Facebook or Instagram strategy. It's important on social media to have a consistent brand image, right? So you'll see on the different official accounts that we run, we've designed, the visuals are very different, the brand colors are different, and why, why do you feel like, oh, well, it's just a WeChat account. Like, why do we need to design the articles? Why can't I just put text and visuals and call it a day? It's because on WeChat, the discovery process, when you type in like a search on WeChat, it's not like Instagram. Like I can't just type in Toronto real estate and realtor names pop up. Like they don't do, their, their discovery search isn't as proficient as say something on Instagram. You actually have to type in something quite exact for it to pop up on WeChat. So the discovery process is more organic on WeChat, meaning somebody reads your article, let's say they read uh, a Burke's article, and then they share that onto their newsfeed, and I'm their friend, and I read that article, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's a nice article, but I don't follow them yet. The next time my friend shares the article again, and I open another Burke's article, and I'm like, oh, I recognize the branding. I recognize the photos. I recognize these brand colors. Okay, this is what it looks like. So it starts building that brand awareness and that's why branding is important. Because let's say there's a new project and 10 of you in here write about that project. Okay, so, and all of you have official accounts and you're all pushing out that content. Say customer A reads about, reads all these 10 articles but they don't know who's who because there's no branding behind it. All of you are pushing out the same content. So what makes you different and memorable even when you're running a WeChat official account? Right? So that's why we consider the branding and the design behind a WeChat official account. So what other things should we take note of for these WeChat official accounts? Uh, as an overseas foreign account, you are only able to do four WeChat newsletters per month. So if you guys decide after today, well, I want to go and register for an overseas official account, every 30 days you're able to push out four WeChat newsletters. What is a WeChat newsletter? So one new WeChat newsletter, it allows you to write up to eight articles. So a WeChat article is like a blog post. So all the news, whoever, whichever one of you subscribes to different news accounts on WeChat, you'll notice that it's actually quite long, right? When you read a news article on WeChat. So you're able to publish up to eight different articles in one WeChat newsletter. So for example, if you have four different listings that you want to feature in one WeChat newsletter, you can just do them as separate articles. Or if you have, let's say you have listings in Markham and you have listings in North York and then you have listings in downtown Toronto and you want to do one article each separated by neighborhood, you could also do that. So it depends on your understanding of your buyer demographic, right? Usually when we see real estate investors or buyers, it's all about location, 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 right? So a lot of times it makes sense when we run different real estate developer accounts that we're running, that we're categorizing based on location. So neighborhoods, because people want to live in certain neighborhoods. Like in Vancouver where I'm based, we have Shaughnessy and everybody wants to live on the west side, right? So if we categorize by these types of neighborhoods, then people know what article to read. Um, so with these WeChat articles, we have to keep in mind that at the very end of that, because it's being shared in somebody else's WeChat Moments newsfeed, just make sure your, either your QR code is there for them to scan it and contact you as a salesperson, or your channel, your official account's QR code is in there as well. Right? So for any inquiries coming in through your official WeChat account, you have 48 hours to get back to them. And this is because WeChat does not want you spamming your prospective buyers or people who are in touch with you, so they give you that time limit. Right? But for WeChat, account, uh, WeChat official account management, you're, there's actually an app you can download that helps you manage it better and faster on your phone instead of having to log into a desktop platform each time. So again, uh, there's not a ton of time to cover all of it, but if you want to learn more about those different mobile apps that you could use to manage your official account, happy to tell you a bit more after the session as well. So WeChat Inner Sites. 
So this is one of those functions that's not unlocked for every account. So what we've discovered with WeChat is the functionalities you get sometimes depends on the industry because when you register the account, you have to categorize yourself under a certain industry and the types of services that you provide. So after they verify your account, they will release certain functions to you. And sometimes you have to wait. So maybe your account has to be six months old or one year old before you get access to certain functions. So WeChat Inner Sites is something that would fall under that category. But if you are able to have that, it is actually very useful because it's almost like having your own internal website within your WeChat official account. So what you're seeing on the left side is this account, it's a WeChat official account. They've actually embedded the inner site so you can click through the bottom custom menu bar there. You can click through and it goes into their WeChat landing page of the inner site. So here in the back end of the WeChat administrative platform, you will actually see templates. So the templates, these sites look very familiar to anyone that's that uses Chinese apps, right? Like usually we have a headline image, then we have a bunch of icons, then we have some featured articles. So these templates are actually provided by WeChat to the accounts that have access to inner sites. So when you have that, essentially what happens is you can, let's say you have a pop-up for, okay, the latest listing that you wanna feature. And you can change that regularly, right? Once you have access to this inner site function, and then let's say different articles or projects or listings that you have could be feature articles on your, in, on your landing page for the inner site. And of course, if you have other useful information such as let's say you have market analysis reports or you have different stats that you want to share with your prospective buyers, you could also integrate in, into here. Like one of the icons could be directing people to those, that type of information. So WeChat Inner Sites helps to build a richer in-app experience when you've unlocked that function. So I almost feel like WeChat is like a game we play and we need to play it long enough for them to unlock those functions for us. Okay. Go back. No, not so much back, okay. So the other thing, this one, depending on whether you have a developer friend who can give you an amazing rate to help you develop a mini program. Once you have a WeChat official account, you can apply to open up a developer, de let's call it a developer account, but you can open up a developer account which lets you develop WeChat mini programs which are hosted, again, on the WeChat platform. So you guys may have used WeChat mini programs. How many of you have used mini programs from different brands, et cetera? Like, can I just get a quick show of hands who's used WeChat mini programs? So I have, so what the, the types of- Concord. <laughs> do you use the Concord mini program? <laughs> so Concord has a mini program. So what other, other than the Concord mini program, what other mini programs do you guys use? Which one do you use? He's on his phone right now. So <laughs> Sorry, what was that? We got a lot of mini programs. It's called the PDF one, the PDF. Okay. Okay. Like some other, some other apps that I've seen coming from brands, like for example, Nike has one where they let uh, their users actually build an entire training program, right? So it's a different way to engage and educate people on the brand. So how does this relate to real estate? So for example, like Isaac mentioned, there's a Concord mini program. And how Concord has done it is they've actually separated the, the mini program in terms of cities. Is that right, Isaac? Right, so we've separated out by cities. So Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto. So you're able to, to then click into these different cities and see the different featured projects in each of the cities. So let's say if you are a realtor who has multiple listings, again, in different neighborhoods, you are able to use something like a mini program to showcase all of them in one place. And these mini programs can be assessed um, quite easily once somebody favorites your mini program, they can come back to it again and again to check what new listings you have. So it depends on whether you have, for this type of tool, if you have enough listings or if you have a team that covers 
a wide range of, let's say, housing types, product types, then this might be something that you want to look at doing. And of course, you can take a look at the Concord mini program. I'm sure ha Isaac and his team are very happy to show that with you. And then WeChat, here's another uh, example of a WeChat mini program. So this one has more of an e-commerce tie-in with it. So for this one, we had consulted with Burke's Jewelry to help them set up actually Canada's first uh, re online jewelry sales program that was integrated with WeChat Pay. So people could shop online and they could cash out on WeChat Pay. Now in the case of real estate, unfortunately, we are not able to buy real estate with WeChat Pay. Like, is that, that's still true, right? Like, has anyone tried selling real estate with WeChat Pay? I don't know, anyone take a deposit for say $30,000 on WeChat? <laughs> I haven't seen that yet, but let me know when that happens. Right, but e-commerce applications are also available as part of WeChat mini programs. So it can be informative, like the Nike one, or it can be e-commerce integrated, like this one that we did for uh, Burke's Jewelry. Okay, this next one, I'm not going to spend too much time on. And the reason is because for people in real estate or in the real estate industry, we're actually a restricted industry in terms of advertising on WeChat. So we're actually not allowed to advertise on WeChat, but we are allowed to have official accounts, so you can still open one. But the sample here that you see, so the little Burke Square ad, if you were to run an ad on WeChat Moments, that's how it would show up as. And also in the right side uh, screenshot, the BMW ad, that one can take you to an experiential landing page. So let's say, Hmm. Let's say for the BMW ad when I click in, the landing page can actually be interactive. So I can actually draw on the screen. They will prompt you to say, okay, draw the V where the BMW is going to make a U-turn or a sharp turn. So you draw it and then that action actually prompts a pop-up for either a registration form or to customize your car or to book an appointment. So. WeChat Moments ads are, have become actually very interactive versus what we see on say Instagram or on Facebook, which while we are moving towards richer media, actually WeChat has more interactive elements on it. Like they have video uh, elements already, but I am actually more impressed with these types of ads because there is an interactive element, whether it's beauty ads, jewelry ads, or even car ads that we see. So if there, if any of your clients are wanting to spend on WeChat Moments ads, it does require a WeChat official account. You are able to, uh, once you have that official account, you can request to open a WeChat advertising account. Case by case basis right now, not all industries in an overseas market are allowed to advertise. So right now what we've seen is usually if you're in retail or online e-commerce, they will open the ad account or if there's a special case, you apply to be on a whitelist, but that takes a few weeks and you have to go through an email procedure to get that done. Um, but for at the moment, right now, real estate overseas is still not an open uh, industry for us to place ads. And in terms of if you do place ads, if you don't have at least $10,000 to spend per week, then it's a waste of money and time. So it's quite a high threshold right now, even though they tell you there's no minimum spend, if you don't spend enough on WeChat, then you're not going to get the results because WeChat moments ads are more awareness based versus conversion based, right? But they will help you reach an audience. So it's more awareness and reach based versus conversion based. Okay, and I asked earlier whether a lot of us here use WeChat pay. So quickly, because I, I'm not sure we have a ton of retailers in the room, but for retailers, WeChat Pay is really a godsend because it means tourists and visitors from China or people who have immigrated here from China and have WeChat Pay are able to make purchases very seamlessly by just scanning a QR code. So it's really helped um, a variety of businesses start taking, uh, accepting payments from visitors outside that are coming from China. And the reason why WeChat Pay is so popular even outside of the country is because not a lot of people bring a ton of cash out from China, but they are able to pay using these variety of apps. So WeChat Pay isn't the only one. There's also like Alipay and various different types of payment 
uh, processors, but WeChat Pay is definitely a very popular one. Depends on your relationship with your bank. That's a funny answer, but for example, when we work with different jewelry brands, we've been told depending on the relationship a user has with their bank, because it's tied to their bank account, right? So. But does the currency restriction apply to that in China? Yes. Yeah, so again, that depends on, like some people have been able to process, say, a $30,000 transaction to buy diamonds, right? So it depends on the individual and their relationship to their bank and that threshold. Just like when you go to the ATM, right? I may be able to withdraw, say, 300 bucks, but you may be able to withdraw $1,000 every day. So it's dependent on the individual's relationship with... Does a sovereign limit? Yes, $10,000 as well. Yes, but then you could divide it into multiple transactions over several days. <laughs> so that's your way around it. Let's say if you're selling, I don't know, cars, right? Then you're able to separate it out. Or in luxury goods, you can also separate it out into multiple transactions. So uh, definitely WeChat Pay is very useful. Um, definitely in China, but also more co becoming more common within the Canadian market and even worldwide as well. So that's the WeChat section. And like I mentioned, some functions require having a WeChat official account, and some functions are easier to implement and don't require an official account. But there are also other ways beyond WeChat if you're looking to reach the Chinese audience. So there's a few other ways to do that. So the first one would be Weibo, which is essentially Chinese Twitter. So some quick stats on what Weibo is and what it does. Essentially, it looks exactly the same as a Twitter. Usually, it's the visuals are presented in a nine block square, so what we also fondly refer to as an IG nine block, so an Instagram nine block, so it looks something similar to that. It is much more text heavy in comparison to an Instagram, right? So. Think of it as Chinese Twitter. It's still 140 characters, and then it does have quite a bit of active users on the platform. And the way to advertise on here if you are a realtor or a real estate team or a real estate developer is let's say you have a project launch or an open house. You could sponsor a post on a platform that has a lot of followers. So for example, in Toronto, you have a platform called Superlife, right? Do you guys follow Superlife? Right? So if you have a platform here called Superlife, you can actually go and sponsor a Weibo post, and then they can promote the open house for you. Right? So that's what, that's what we've done for a variety of different real estate projects, leveraging other people's platforms. Because on Weibo, unless you already have tens of thousands of followers yourself, it's a waste of time and money to try and build your own audience, especially if you're a solo proprietor or a small team, it's much more economical and efficient time-wise to go and sponsor a post on Weibo. So that's one of the potential things you could do. So for example, this is what sponsored posts could look like, and these are some of the campaigns we've run in Vancouver. So for a post that's a few hundred dollars, let's say it's $300 for us to boost a sponsored post, then you're already looking at 37,000 views or 32,000 view, uh, 32, views. So that's a fashion one we did for Max Mara. And then the one over here was a 10 year anniversary campaign we ran for Shangri-La. So that one, we actually did a full month pin to top. So on a Weibo profile, you can actually pin a certain post at the top of that Weibo profile's uh, account. So every time somebody visits, the account, they will see this post first, which is why that post got eight times the views versus the other ones, right? So a very economical way when contrasting against WeChat advertorials, because the average going price for a WeChat advertorial, if you were looking at making a placement, I would say for the Toronto market, you're looking at $1,500 per placement, and that's on a one-day placement, right? So depending on whether you want to reach a ton of people or whether you want to really target a WeChat channel that has your demographic, right? Let's say it's a, let's say your demographic is downsizers who are 50 years and up and they're looking for a three bedroom. Then you probably want to go onto WeChat and find an official account that has readers of 
their type of news that are in that demographic to make it relevant, right? You probably don't want to go to a WeChat channel that has a lot of uh, younger people reading about food and dining because that's not your relevant audience. So the thing with advertising on WeChat and Weibo is you need to do your own homework um, on which channel fits the best because it's not as not as uh, easy to use as say Facebook and Instagram where you can go on the platform and you're like, well, I want to find people 18 to 49. Those stats don't, don't exist on WeChat official accounts because it's not shown to you, right? Like you can't just go in a platform and type it in unless you have a WeChat, like an official WeChat advertising account where you're spending say $10,000 a week. But if you're not doing that and you're going to a WeChat influencer account like a Singtao or a Mingpao or Superlife, you need to personally do the homework on whether the content fits with your prospective buyer like profile and then you evaluate whether you want to spend that money. So you're looking at say three, four hundred dollars for a Weibo post and then you're looking at fifteen hundred dollars or two thousand five hundred dollars for a WeChat article and you also need to create the content for the WeChat article, right? So uh, the amount of work that goes into these two different types of advertising methods differs by quite a bit, and so does the monetary investment. So something to consider, but this is another venue that you could consider. And also on Weibo. So something fun that we've done on Weibo is we actually took one of the influencer accounts, we took one of the influencer accounts, and then we put, we put the influencer with the sales team people inside a Lexus hybrid. And then we drove them, like took them on a test drive for 45 minutes, and then we debunked the myths of driving a hybrid car because we were introducing a new Lexus hybrid model to the market. And this was a more interactive way for them to, to promote the new hybrid model and for people to ask questions in the Weibo live stream about the hybrid cars so they could answer on the spot. So it was more interactive way. And the other good thing about this is after you do the live stream with the influencer, you get the actual video is a permalink, meaning you can repurpose that content elsewhere. So let's say you cut snippets from it and you put it on Google or you put it on your Instagram or you put it on your WeChat even. So you can repurpose the live stream content if you're doing like a Q&A on a new project, right? You could cut those snippets up. But Weibo Livestream is another tool that we haven't seen a lot of real estate uh, individuals use it yet, but could be a tool, especially when there's health concerns, right? When people aren't showing up in as big crowds as they used to be to open houses, to project launches, this could be a good way to continue to get the word out to people who may not be physically there. Okay, so Chinese influencer marketing on Instagram. So we've been doing quite a bit of this, but more so on the jewelry side of things, right? So a lot of jewelry brands are hoping to tap into the Chinese influencer demographic. So we've actually helped them uh, do this through whether it's IG stories or more integrated campaigns on Instagram. So that's another route that you could look at. For those of you who are here for the Instagram session, right, like tapping into that influential power, but creating co-branded content so that it looks authentic and that you can repurpose it afterwards for your brand, not just they posted a photo with your <laughs> business card, right? That's not very authentic and not very convincing either. So how do you really integrate that influence into your organic content? Okay, how many of you use Bantuan here? The food delivery app? Nobody? Seriously? Okay. You guys use food delivery apps, right? Foodora, DoorDash? Okay, okay, okay. So, okay, you guys use some sort of food delivery app. Okay, good. So, the interesting thing with these Chinese food delivery apps is they actually have landing page ads that you can buy. Or sometimes they actually have flyers that go with the delivery. So imagine going into every home, not just into the mailbox, because I know a lot of you do direct mail pieces that go into mailboxes, and then they go straight into the recycling bin. Waste of paper, waste of money. But when you do this, because it gets delivered into the home and then they're unwrapping their food, I don't care if they use my direct mailer as like, put it under their food. I'm like, great, put it under there, because then you're looking at it. 
right? Like, then at least I'm getting it in front of them. So there's different ways with these food delivery apps that I think gives us a different way to expose the brand to an audience that are bringing this advertising to their homes. So Chinese food delivery apps, uh, this one is in Vancouver. So if you guys have a different one, I know there's one called Little Red Car. Who uses that one? Xiao Hongche? No? I'm like, what apps do you guys use? <laughs> oh, okay. So that's the one you guys use here. Okay. You don't? <laughs> Okay, so take a look at the delivery apps and check what ads they have because that could be where you place your ads. And I can tell you it's actually not that expensive. So if you're already putting money behind a print ad that's, getting, that's in classifieds and not getting seen, you might as well take a look at how much these ads cost. Okay, Chinese mobile apps, some uh, news apps, news platforms, they have their own uh, mobile apps. So again, another venue for you to look into because they do interesting things like if you pay them, say, $1,000, they will actually do a push notification to every member that downloaded their app. So imagine if all 10,000 of their app users gets, uh, gets a notification from you saying you have an open house today, right? Or that's something that you could look into and some mobile apps offer. And another thing that we found interesting was search bar ads. So within their apps, they actually allow you to, let's say, purchase a popular search term. So if you have a project or a listing, you can actually list your project name as a popular search, and then that shows up in, on the search page. So another way to gain more exposure also to the Chinese audience. So I had somebody frantically waving at me back there, so I'm gonna wrap up the presentation now.